r slash ask reddit flight attendants have you ever had to deal with a person dying mid-flight how did you go about it i'm an airline pilot unfortunately this is not uncommon because the cabin environment reduced oxygen partial pressure travel stress fear of flying stress can be potentially harsh to people already chronically or acutely unwell early morning elderly person with a history of cardiac problems hasn't eaten or drank stressed from the rush of traveling through an airport stressed from a fear of flying unfortunately it has been known to trigger things like strokes or angina and even cardiac arrests it hasn't happened to me luckily my serious medicals have all ended in good news with the passenger recovering in hospital but i have colleagues who have had a passenger die i'm not sure the majority of people actually realize the training the cabin crew actually go through they are not on board to solely placate and fetch you a gin and tonic their main role is above all else safety to expeditiously get you off in the event of an evacuation and to be capable of providing advanced first aid they and as in the flight deck are medically trained and have to go through a government approved program of refresher training annually by annually the cabin crew have access to a defibrillator oxygen drugs and a large quantity of first aid equipment and materials across three first aid kits long haul aircraft have a secure pack of serious emergency use drugs like adrenaline and anesthetics that the crew cannot use they are only for the use of any doctors on board during a medical emergency the crew are all trained to recognize the symptoms of coordinate and immediately begin to treat serious emergencies like strokes arrests anaphylaxis all sorts at least three will treat in predefined roles while the fourth will call us to pass details and provide a preliminary recommendation that is we have to divert now unfortunately passengers can and do die the success rate of our ose recovery from arrest outside of hospital is very poor when they do the crew do all they can to protect the dignity of the passenger and assist comfort their relatives or travel companions on board the passenger remains in their seat with an oxygen mask on to give the rest of the passengers the impression they are still alive as a death would make people uncomfortable and have them staring at the unfortunately deceased passenger undermining their dignity. The whole process is rigorously trained and designed to provide the best medical care possible from non-doctors nurses and to provide as much personal care and dignity as possible in the circumstances. Someone else posted in this thread they have a relative working as cabin crew claiming the passenger is moved to the flight deck. Utter bullshit. Thanks for this. As a paramedic I did wonder what drugs etc. you had on board. Last time I boarded a flight there was information that a patient had a severe allergy to oranges. I mentally refreshed myself on the anaphylaxis pathway just in case. Then the dessert had oranges in it and it turned out they weren't actually severely allergic. Phew. Flight attendant here. Once on a flight over the Pacific Ocean I had a death in flight. An older gentleman and his wife. I guessed in their 70s were the last to board the aircraft they had to be wheeled to their seats on board by the wheelchair porters. In hindsight we probably should have known something was fishy when the gentleman had to be shaken awake by the porters once he got to his seat but at the time he just appeared to be drowsy and napping. But anyway we took off and went about the flight as usual. About halfway into the flight one of the other flight attendants came up and told me that he thinks he heard a passenger collapse in the lavatory and that he needed help getting the door open and that whoever was inside was not responding to them. So we go to the back and pop the lav door off its hinges and lo and behold guess who falls out. It's the older gentleman and he's unresponsive. We rolled him onto his back and he was barely breathing so I told the other flight attendant to stay with the passenger and page for any medical professionals on board while I went to grab emergency medical equipment but the whole time we were trying to coordinate that his wife is yelling at us that he's fine and to just return him to his seat. He was not fine. By the time I grabbed our emergency aid and medical kits and O2 tanks and made it back to the passenger there were three nurses who had already started CPR on the fella and as a messy surprise once they unbuttoned his shirt they found that he had one of those I think they are called colostomy bags the poop bags that attach to your guts and so they were trying to do CPR around that. Sadly the gentleman ended up expiring and after receiving clearance from a doctor on the ground over our satellite phone the nurses stopped CPR after about an hour. What was left was the corpse of a relatively tall Caucasian male in our gallery whose feet blocked off one of the aisles and who was also covered in oozy shit due to his poop bag breaking during CPR. 
We tried our best to cover him with blankets and kept other people out of the area. His wife was of course terribly upset and she went from uncontrollable wailing to silence and at one point I heard her giggling a little under her breath probably shock poor thing. I got some medical details about the gentleman from her and we found out that he had a stroke about 2 weeks prior and also had lung cancer and got out of hospice care to try to make one final vacation together and that the morning of the flight. They made the decision to double both his painkillers and anti-anxiety meds in preparation to fly. Because we were over the ocean we had to continue on to our arrival destination with the body in the galley for about another hour and a half of flight. When we arrived at the airport the sheriff's department also wouldn't allow anyone to leave the plane for at least 45 minutes after arriving at the gate because they had to clear the scene of any foul play. It was a somber deplaning following that to say the least but surprisingly all of the passengers were extremely understanding and we didn't even receive any complaints about what happened or if we did they were never relayed back to that particular crew that day not a flight attendant but i can relate very much to that topic as my mother died on a plane my mother had cancer and she took one last trip to an island she loved and on the way back she was just a week so she fell asleep and never woke up my father was with her when he boarded the plane he actually heard the steward say to his colleague that they had a death candidate on board referring to my mum the stewardess then came and told my father to tell her if there was a medical emergency and she would tell the pilot to do an emergency landing. Mid-flight. 3H flight. My father realized that my mother was dying and he didn't say anything because he knew it was not gonna make a difference anymore. So when they landed my father informed the stewardess that my mother had passed away and she totally freaked. She said that all passengers had to stay in their seats and wait until the doctor came. My father was so embarrassed because he did not want it to let people know that my mother had died. But apparently it is standard procedure so they had to wait until the doctor came and declared my mother dead and then all the passengers were allowed to leave. I still remember that one passenger actually sent us condolences and I felt so bad for them to have experienced something like that. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you for sharing this story. Somewhat relatable. I was on a flight from NY to London. We were about 2 or 3 hours in when the captain came on and said that due to a medical emergency, we'd be landing at St. John's Newfoundland. We got there close to midnight, the airport was empty, and there was snow everywhere. As for the medical emergency, it was an older lady, I think she must have had a stroke. The flight attendants asked if there was a doctor on board, there wasn't, but there was someone studying to be one, a young guy, he was with her the entire time. We waited on the tarmac for the ambulance to arrive, which took quite a while. They carted her off. At that point she was still alive. I don't know anything beyond that. Once she was off, the attendants brought the medical student to first class. Then we waited as the captain got together a flight plan to continue to London. It took several hours. In total, we were on that tarmac for 4 hours. Well I'm a better med student and the absolute worst thing we can do is decrease altitude right now. Mom, so hang in there cowgirl. It happened to my mother. A mom was taking her son who was dying of AIDS back home to Mexico City to die with his family. On the way he went to sleep and never woke up. The mom looked over at my mother midway through the flight and said he's not sleeping is he? It was very sad. They played it off like he was just sleeping so as not to alarm the other passengers. The captain radioed ahead to the ground crew who had the mortuary services ready to take the body. They waited till everyone had gotten off the plane before having the mortuary come and take the body away. They decided not to do an emergency landing because he was going home to Mexico anyway and if they did an emergency landing the family would then have to arrange transport to Mexico City anyways. That's heartbreaking. Not a flight attendant but I work in the field. Recently there was a guy who died mid-flight, was flying with his daughter who was 16 or so, can't quite remember the exact age, he had a stroke or some kind of a heart failure, the daughter had flown half a flight with him dead by her side thinking he was sleeping, they only noticed it when the plane landed, can't even imagine the pain, and the thought that the last thing you'd do with your father would be boarding on a flight, wasn't even a nice airline. But I believe they were flying from a holiday. At least a nice last memory I guess. I can imagine an airline like Spirit or Ryanair sending her a bill for the died in flight fee. 
There was one time where my mom and brother were flying to Lebanon and at one point in the flight an older man died. What they told me was they pretty much just left him where he was and put a sheet over him. Afterwards they just made an emergency stop in Canada so they could take the body off the plane. This comment killed me for some reason. Not a flight attendant but my dad has been flying for the same major airline for more than 35 years. And last year my sister and I were on a flight that he was captaining and my sister is an RN. About 3 hours into the 10 hour overnight flight. Flight attendants alerted my dad that a guy was having a medical issue and so he goes oh. Wake my daughter up. She's a nurse. They also announced over the speaker to ask if there was a doctor. There wasn't. My sister is not a morning person and so they wake her up and she wipes the drool off her face and goes to see the guy. She talks to him and figures out pretty quickly that he is having some kind of esophageal syncope thing. She asks him if he took anything. Especially because she can see that he's been served alcohol at some point in the flight. He says yes but won't tell her what it is. She's like. So I do not give a single duck I am not a cop I'm just trying to help you but he refused. I don't know what she had him do but it eventually passed and he felt better so she went back to her seat. I slept through the whole thing because I am super helpful. I was on a flight with my mom and dad who are both doctors. There was a medical emergency as a passenger was having chest pain. My parents gave him all the first aid possible but his health quickly deteriorated. And my parents basically took turns for an hour or two along with the air hostess trying to stabilize him and give him CPR. He didn't survive unfortunately. Turns out he was returning home after a renal surgery from another country and had significant heart issues. She was only 48. Since my parents were the ones administering medical aid, had to disembark last and have a whole slew of paperwork and cross-examination. So that the airline can protect itself in case of any lawsuit. There were two other doctors on the flight who didn't move a muscle in case they get sued for some reason. I have never been prouder of my parents. They rushed in to help without hesitation and selfishness. Props to your parents. Give them a high five from me. It's fairly common. You basically move the other passengers that the row to other seats if possible. Or you cover them with a blanket if there is nowhere else to move them. Dead bodies aren't dangerous right after death. So the main priority to, to preserve as much dignity for the deceased as possible and to keep the other passengers calm. Dead bodies aren't dangerous right after death. Once they enter a state of undetho. Much different story. Not a doctor or witness to one of these events. But my parents were once on a plane where someone had a medical emergency and the EMTs were waiting at the gate to help he guy. The flight attendants made an announcement for everyone to stay in their seats so the EMTs could get to the patient. But nobody listened. My parents were horrified as they watched the aisles fill up with people, making it impossible to get to the patient. My parents never found out what ended up happening. But I can't imagine things ended well for the patient if they couldn't even get medical attention once the plane finally landed. Watch it people. Like most stories this is second hand. But my dad was an airline pilot who as part of an exchange program flew Hajj, Muslim pilgrimage to Mecca, flights out of Indonesia. He said that it was very common for villages to pool their money and send their oldest member to represent them on the pilgrimage. Because of their age and the physical stress of the Hajj they would frequently die on the flight back home. Their faith would sustain them through the event itself. They had a doctor on board whose job was to deal with this. They were quietly put in body bags and kept strapped into their seats until the plane landed. To my dad's surprise this was viewed not as a tragedy but as an extremely good way to go. I'm not sure if this is mainstream Muslim belief but he was told that by dying on the way back from completing the pilgrimage they were guaranteed a ticket to heaven. I was on a cruise when there was an evening announcement that the ship would be going faster than usual overnight and would reach the port a few hours earlier due to a medical emergency. My parents, avid cruisers, said that's code words for need to drop off a dead guy. If it was a true medical emergency, the patient would be helicoptered off. But if a person just dies, the cruise line wants to discreetly as possible remove the body. Hence, getting to her port very early before all the passengers are milling around. As to why make that announcement at all, and just get to port earlier without anyone knowing. It's a legal thing with the gambling. People gamble all night on cruises. But once you get to the destination, gambling must stop. So the announcement is really for the gamblers. As a passenger I had a guy next to me start dying. 
His lips were blue and he was going in and out. He had explained to me when he got on about his cumbersome oxygen travel tank that he uses because he smoked like a chimney and inhaled fumes in Vietnam and he was also NYPD during 9-11. When I saw him going I hooked up his oxygen for him. Then we pretended nothing happened because a man not seemed to be intimate and emotional enough for that tough old bastard. I still think of him sometimes. He's basically a superhero that we all forgot. While you calmly ask the passengers if anyone knows how to fly a plane. I picked the wrong day to quit sniffing glue. Nervous? Very. First time? No. I've been nervous lots of times. Was on a flight back from Thailand. Had a layover in Doha. On the way from Doha to Texas the older Indian guy in the row ahead of me had a heart attack. There were several doctors who stepped in and administered CPR and the guy's wife was wailing the entire time. Understandably. Keep in mind this happened somewhere over the Atlantic. We were 45 minutes out of Houston and these guys had been doing CPR for 3 plus hours when the pilot came on and said that they were going to turn around and emergency land in New Orleans. Paramedics came on the plane and took him and his wife off. Was a several hour ordeal. No ducking clue why they didn't land at the first available spot on the east coast and why they eventually decided to turn around and land in New Orleans. But all I know is that guy was inescapably dead after 3 plus hours of CPR. All we could think is maybe they couldn't get clearance to land earlier due to the plane being international. Specifically coming from the Middle East. When I was going on very stressful trip from Maryland to California to testify in a murder trial. I had sudden symptoms on takeoff that seemed like I could be having a heart attack. It turns out that it was just the pressure put on my facet joint arthritis that mixed with panic. When I had the pain. But they didn't know that for some time. They called for doctors and took me to the back of the plane. Where I ended up staying for most of the flight. The doctors used the medications I had on hand to help me. But it was the two stewards that took care of me. I hadn't realized until then how much more there is to their job than just wrangling passengers and serving drinks. They were so kind and supportive of me and took me from being terrified for my life to being calm and well enough to go back to my seat to nap for the last hour. I will never forget how great they were. I just wanted to post this. Because there are far too many people who disregard how great the flight staff is and all that they go through. They really deserve respect for all they do. This is an open thank you to all of you. My mom has been a flight attendant for almost 40 years. She told me there are two things they are known to do. Not sure if this is actual training or just how the employees choose to best handle situations. 1. If the person is dying. You ask for a doctor and immediately radio the nearest runway that can accommodate your aircraft and start heading toward it. They'll have M's waiting. Most of the FARs are trained in first aid and they have a kitty on board. They'll start helping as best they can right away. 2. If the person has died and nobody has noticed, you do nothing. You wait to land and then have everyone deplane. There's nothing you can do and the body is probably headed to a place where it can be dealt with by friends family. A true story. My mom was working and it was service time. Push the cart. Hand out drinks. Maybe food. When she came upon an old couple. The woman was awake with a look of absolutely shock and sadness on her face. The man next to her. Her husband. Appeared to be sleeping. My mom said that neither one of them said a word. Just exchanged knowing glances. My mom gave her a water and a note that said, We're in the back if you need anything. And moved to the next row. Once they landed and everyone deplaned, the woman broke down and they got Emson to take his body out. Edit. Spelling. Flight attendant here. I had a passenger die mid flight a few months ago. The man was really old and traveling home with his son. I heard a call on the PA for a doctor and I knew that it was the man who was brought on early as a carry on because he couldn't walk. There happened to be a doctor sitting right across the aisle from the man and she was performing CPR on him in the aisle. As the second flight attendant on the scene I was retrieving emergency equipment, eat, oxygen, etc. And was ultimately in charge of connecting the doctor performing CPR to our doctor on the ground. I remember at one point moving people away. Having them stand in the back so we could have more space and because it was a very chaotic and traumatic scene. On the other side of the aisle a row back was a man with his two little kids. One was playing on his iPad with headphones and not paying attention but the other, a little girl, was sitting on his lap and they were watching. I asked them if they wanted to move to the back. 
they weren't particularly in the way, and the man said, no it was okay, I was surprised that he would let his daughter see what was happening but continued to assist with then scene. Since I was the one trying to contact the ground medical doctor I was standing above the doctor giving CPR and using Eid. At one point I heard her say something to the effect of, would he have wanted this? I looked at the son who was sitting watching. They must have established that he had a, do not resuscitate, and the doctor stopped CPR. Then we all waited for him to pass. It was surreal. It didn't take long and we watched him pass. Another doctor on the scene closed his eyes. We covered his body with a blanket. Two wonderful people in first class offered to switch seats with the son and the deceased. It was a completely full flight. So this was good because it provided a more private space for his son and his deceased father. Later in the flight the flight crew was gathering information from all the people on the scene that helped. When I got to the main doctor who was working on him. I realized that she was flying with her family. The little girl sitting on her dad's lap was her daughter. Her daughter got to watch her mom try to save this man's life and I can see what an extraordinary experience this must have been for her. I'm tearing up thinking about the whole thing still. My airline was amazing in supporting the crew after the incident. I took some time off and went to a few therapy sessions courtesy of my airline. It helps now to talk about it and share my story with other flight attendants who have gone through the same thing. I also look at this moment in my life as a very special one. In that, I was there at the very end of someone's life. I can't seem to articulate that very well. But, I will always remember the man. Again, somewhat relatable. My ex-husband is a doctor in the British Army. That army thing is a key piece of information you need to keep at the forefront of your mind. About 15 years ago we were on a plane crossing the Atlantic and here comes that announcement. If there is a doctor on the plane could he or she make themselves known to a member of the cabin crew. After I had jabbed him in the ribs a few times, he got up snarling and went to look for whoever it was he was going to have to shoot. He came back about 3 quarters of an hour later and sat down with a face like thunder. I asked him what had happened and he said that there was a young couple on the plane who had taken drugs before the flight and were having some kind of bad reaction. Dehydrated. Hallucinating. Distressed. Vomiting etc. The captain had said that if he thought they were ill enough he would divert the plane to Iceland. Are they going to be okay? I asked. I have no idea. He replied. But I'm not going to ducking Iceland. They were and we didn't. Bro, you made it to the end, you're a ducking beast. Thanks for watching mate, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more high quality content.